He makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. On the internet. On the internet. What's up, Timmy Joe fans? I'm Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. And today, we have a state of tech episode and that is because uh, some th recent doings have happened and I uh, want to talk about them but I don't have the physical parts to do any cool testing or anything like that because I'm not on the cool Intel kids table it's a high school thing I need to get more popular whatever that's okay though so I signed an NDA for uh, specifically this motherboard month and a half ago and I was expecting to get a review sample of this in advance of the launch. Now, I can tell this was a cluster of a launch because I didn't get this until the day the embargo lifted and the actual CPUs went on sale. So I didn't pre-order or anything, which means I have a motherboard and, as we'll talk about in a second, no way to get a CPU. Not that I could even really afford one right now. Speaking of which, before we get into it, let's go ahead and have a word from our sponsor so maybe I can afford it later. Today's video is sponsored by FSP, one of my favorite case and power supply manufacturers. Whether you want an inexpensive feature packed quality computer case, a high end tower style CPU cooler, or a powerful rock solid power supply, FSP has you covered. Their CMT line of cases have everything from budget solutions priced around $50 to full tempered glass RGB beauties like the CMT 510 and 520. They also have powerful power supply solutions for any situation, from budget PC to full-on server. I have been reviewing their stuff since way before this sponsorship, and I've always been surprised at the price to performance that FSP offers. See links in the description to browse their products, available on Amazon and Newegg. I highly recommend them. Thanks FSP for sponsoring this video. So yes, I have a Z390. Uh, it's basically the same motherboard. I have my Ryzen system behind me. The uh, Z390 Aorus, Aorus uh, Pro Wi-Fi, which would be a very, very, very nice motherboard if you could get the damn CPUs. So I didn't pre-order because I wasn't going to pre-order a $660 Canadian CPU before it launched, not knowing the motherboard was coming. And I'm not going to cover it until I can afford it otherwise. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm just a small tech guy and I run a little computer business that's keeping me afloat here. It's not like I'm getting massive views and in Intel, I'm on Intel's radar, I, radar, I should say. I, I sent email after email to Intel to hopefully get in on this launch and no one ever replied back to me. So whatever. But, you know, you got you to gotta roll with the punches. So I would have just went and ordered one that day, you know, just, you know, because I would have. Love to have had this coverage, or at least you know, upgraded my game, my uh, gaming slash editing rig behind me over here to this new 9900K. I think that would be really cool. I've been using Ryzen for the better part of two years now, but it's not in stock. It wasn't in stock like within an hour, or probably even less, of it going on sale. Now I don't believe that's because a billion people ran out there and bought them. I believe it's because the stock was so damn low that Newegg might have had 10 SKUs of each one. And, uh, you know, Micro Center got one per store. And the uh, they just weren't able to produce because that's Intel's problem right now. Even at 14 nanometer, they're not able to produce the CPUs. Which, I guess, is that whole, like, you know, it's sold out. Everyone must have bought it. Makes them look good. But no, it's not. it doesn't make them look good. I have twice had to order a Ryzen CPU on launch day the first 1700 and then the 2700 and I was able to do that okay because there was stock of the CPUs and a lot of people bought them especially the second gen I'm sure and uh, you know the the problems had all been ironed out by then and I was able to get them this not able to get it well what about one of the lower SKUs well let's just first look at the price 579 uh, <laughs> that's American by the way it's about hundred and twenty dollars more than that Canadian uh, and it's 304 for a 2700X. That's for shame. That's just sh shameful. Now, I understand they don't want to cannibalize their whole lineup, and they're picking this as being some sort of special CPU, and you probably don't need more than an 8700K, which is more closely related to this, but even the 8-core, no hyper-threading version is 419 It's $120 more than Ryzen. That's re-goddamn-diculous. It's 
Just completely unacceptable. So that's not the point of the video today. It's not to uh, you know just bitch at Intel for not having CPUs available and them being too expensive. It's also to kind of show how that puts a nail in the coffin because all their chips are on the table. Okay, Intel has put every has is all in at 14 nanometer unless they can pull a 10 nanometer uh, horseshoe out of their ass which probably won't happen by the way because things are looking pretty grim for 10 nanometer anytime soon uh, then they're gonna have to compete with a much smaller process node a, a much better processor from AMD in less than a year it might even be in like uh, you know 10 months eight nine months time if the cycle of the of this is to be maintained, we might even see a 3700X or a Zen 2 7 nanometer processor at CES this year. There's rumors for that. There's definitely rumors for GPUs for that. So what is that going to mean for the 9900K when all of a sudden Ryzen, the performance, is actually much closer than you would think it's going to be? Let's look. So Ryzen 14 nanometer to 12. I have the 1700 and I upgraded to a 2700X. And I gotta say, it's like night and day difference. I know it's only like three, 400 megahertz, but I, I honestly feel like this is a much snappier CPU. It is a, uh, you know, a, a whole lot more responsive, the bugs are all ironed out, but there were a, a quite a bit of improvements made just by shrinking the node by two nanometers. There was a 14.3% node shrink. Okay, that's, that's not that much. You know, but it's something. And there was a 4.8% clock speed increase from 3.8 to 4 gigahertz all the way up to uh, 4.2 to 4.3, depending on if you're overclocking or not. And a 3% IPC gain that was just free performance. Clock for clock, the, the Zen Plus is faster, even at the same frequency. So this is going to happen again. And it's going to happen much more, you know, there's going to be much more to it. Because the, the node shrink isn't no 14%. It's quite a bit bigger than that, actually. So, Ryzen 14 nanometer to 12 cent, there was uh, about a 7% synthetic benchmarks improvement, 5.3% gaming improvement, and a 5.3% rendering improvement. I went and kind of just grabbed numbers from a couple of reviewers that I really like. I compared their launch day coverage and their 9900K coverage on the 2700X. And then went back and looked at their 1700 and, you know, kind of looked at an average of what the gains were in kind of each department. And, you know, that's notable, especially considering the price didn't go up that much, if, if at all, especially compared to the launch of Verizon. So that's a pretty good improvement. So now if we see the 2700X versus the 9900K, Intel's got a pretty good lead. I went and did the same thing. I grabbed like hardware unboxed and uh, uh, gamers nexus numbers for you know what this stuff is. You know what the what improvement is when you go you know to the Intel chip, and it's about a 15 you know to se or so 13 to 17 percent improvement depending on the workload and, and what have you. So they have a pretty decent lead, but I mean what 13 to 17 percent for 200 more dollars? That's that's not, like right now it's not compelling at all and they're going to get beat very, very soon by seven nanometer. So if we look at the theoretical Zen 2 3700X, you know, assuming they call it that, uh, improvements, we're going to see a 41.7% node shrink. Okay. We're going from 12 to seven nanometers. Now I'm no, you know, performance engineer at, at AMD or Intel. I can't tell you what this actually is going to mean for performance increases. But if we just kind of nab a snapshot of how much better things got from tw uh, 14 to 12, we can kind of make some you know, uh, assumptions on what the performance of Zen 2 is gonna be like. We're gonna see about a 14% clock speed improvement with that type of node shrink. And let's just say it stays at a 3% IPC gain because you know, just shrinking it a little bit, they got 3% shrinking it a lot more, you'd imagine they'd gain at least that same 3%. Well, now all of a sudden we're going to see a 4.3 gigahertz base go to 4.7 gigahertz, you know, uh, that would be ridiculous. Now, I think that's a little optimistic. I really doubt that Zen 2 is going to get that high, but imagine it did. Even if it's hitting 
you know, if you can overclock a Zen 2 with a better IPC to 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz, like we saw a 300 megahertz improvement, you'd think we'd see at least the same improvement considering there's a lot more node shrinking happening. You could see an MSRP of what, 349? That's the uh, Ryzen 2700 was like an MSRP of 329. They could bump that up 30 bucks easy, you know, and, and it's still way more, you know, enticing. And then uh, would you need an X570 chipset like you do, you know, like re realistically, if you're going to go with the 9900K, you're going to need a really good Z370 motherboard, like a really good one, or you're going to have to go with this chipset. Well, I would imagine I could probably, with the no shrink and the, uh, you know, the uh, power consumption going down and, and whatnot, and the temperatures and the, you know, all, all going down, I could use the same cooling solution on the 2700X as I could on the 3700X. And, you know, you're not going to need the, the better motherboard. Maybe, you know, it'd be, it'd be a good idea. Maybe there'll be some, you know, XFR 3.0 that it'll be worth getting into for that. But that's another thing. Their XFR, their whole uh, way they do their clock speed is a lot nicer too. You can leave a Ryzen at stock and get very near the bleeding edge of performance when with an Intel they're only kind of catching up now with that latest chipset and you're still not you're only seeing like a one core boost of five gigahertz when a lot of people are going to want their all core boost to five gigahertz so it's interesting so we could see potentially this 15 you know this lead here that it has over the you know if we get 14 to you know 17 percent improvement on the 2700x all of a sudden these numbers are shrinking down to like nothing even let's just say Hypothetically, the Ryzen 3700X launches and it's 10% slower, but it's 40% cheaper. Who in their right mind is going to go with Intel? Especially considering right now the gains you see on 1080p is, you know, is, is this. But when you go to 1440p or 4K, all of these leads shrink if not get nullified, you know, and not everyone's going to want to spring for the latest greatest graphics card now we'll talk about amd graphics cards later and how that could shake things up too but realistically we're going to see this link this lead that intel has shrink to under 10 percent with the next launch of zen 2 and it's going to be a very very interesting time that is for sure so just want to leave you with that i think that intel is not doing well Especially considering I can't even buy the damn processor they just launched. And I'm their ideal candidate to buy it. And I'm very seriously second guessing even ordering it when it comes available. I might just hold on to this motherboard and wait for the, you know, ho hopefully it'll shrink down to MSRP before I buy it. Because am I going to buy a $660 processor to gain 15% improvement over my 2700 Maybe I will because I want to benchmark the latest and greatest games and have the greatest stuff because I have a YouTube channel. But who in their right mind, if you've already adopted Ryzen, are going to go with Intel just because the games have a little bit better you know, uh, improvement at 1080p when your monitor is probably a fast 1440p monitor anyways and you know, you're, you're more GPU bound anyways unless you just bought an RTX, which is way too expensive. Unless you're a millionaire... You're probably going Ryzen, and you're probably going Polaris, or you know maybe maybe you're going uh, you know with uh, Pascal. You're not definitely not going RTX, that's for sure. And you're going to get very close to the performance that the other guys are offering. You know at least in the, the CPU side. I just don't see where Intel's head at. If they would have launched this properly and waited just a little bit longer. And made sure all their stock was in, you know, the, the stock for the units were available and the prices were a little bit lower. Maybe they wouldn't have shot themselves in the foot, but inevitably, with their problems with 10 nanometer and their problems even producing 14 nanometer, I see them having a really bad 2019. That is for sure. I'm at Washington Jones on Twitter. I have shirts. Stop staring at my GPUs, you jerks. I believe that I'm gonna stick with Ryzen. Uh, and it's not because I'm a fanboy. It's because there is no reason to spend that much more money for 10, 15% improvement. Unless you're crazy. Now, I truthfully would like to get the 9900K just to overclock it and see well over 2000 in Cinebench, possibly 2200 if you've overclocked it to like 5.1 or 5.2 gigahertz on all cores. But apparently, you need a 
freaking open loop custom cooler or some exotic cooling to do that. Who's going to do that except for a guy like me? I will see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this content, you can hit the subscribe, hit the like button if you agree with me. It's the State of Tech with Timmy Joe. I got t-shirts. I got a Patreon. Really help get the 9900K if you want to see me get it. If you went and threw me a few bucks on Patreon or bought the merch. But I'm not going to beg for it. I will see you guys in another video. Thank you much for the sponsor, uh, FSP. Love their cases. We'll see some new ones from them coming soon. But I'm at Watch Timmy Joe. I'll see you guys later.